Um, I'm going to give you a couple of tips for eyelids because that's, that's something that I find as well that could be tricky for, for some people. And it ended up being like everything looks like with the eyes open, wide open. Um, so um, for the eyelids, I like to use, and you can follow along with this. This is something using tools within ZBrush. Uh, I'm going to select the, the curve tubes. So the curve tubes is this brush right here. Um, when you click and drag, right now, because this is a Dynamesh with no subdivision levels, it would work just fine. So you can just go ahead and do this and create some tubes. Now, the trick with this one is to make sure that they follow the surface. And if I go ahead and start doing something like this, um, you might look, it might look from this angle that it's following, but it is not. It's just you know a very flat angle from the point that you started creating those. Um, and that has some benefits. That's why it's the default behavior of this brush, but you can change it so that it follows the surface of your model. All you have to do is go to the picker and you can change from 1C to continuous C. So 1C is going to look at the point in, in the space or in, the, in your mesh that you created or that you clicked on. That's why it's called 1C. So it's only when going to evaluate the stroke as you drag it once. So the first time you click. So anything that you do after is not going to matter because it's going to be looking at that point that you click first. When you click on continue C, ZBrush is going to continuously evaluate the surface and it's going to basically match every instance or every point of your stroke across the, um, the volume. So I can just go ahead and do this now. Right now that I have this in continuous C, and you see it is nicely added. So this could be something else that you can use to create um, additional volumes to your mesh. It doesn't mean that you are restricted to just just using the the ones that you created in your IMM brush. You can add more stuff as you go. So um, let's say I'm just thinking maybe like the I can't remember the name of that the thing that the um, the chickens have on the neck. Anyway, uh, but I could do something similar or like add a hint of that, maybe with this. Um, you know, it could be something like this. Right? It's kind of like similar to what I did on my other creature. But yeah, it could be something like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it like this just to show you. Uh, but then I could do another one like that. All right, so that's one thing. <laughs> um, uh, but then I was talking about uh, eyelids. So with this technique, with this tool, setting the picker to continue C and the curve brush, uh, you can create really simple eyelids. So I'm going to go ahead and start here at the bottom, uh, reducing the brush size. Uh, by the way, the, the brush size determines the thickness of the brush. So I'm going to click and drag like so. And that's pretty good. So if you want to embed this, this works exactly in the same way as the... Um, as the IMM that we created. So you can use this depth to push this in. I think this works as it is. So I'm going to click somewhere to accept that. I'm going to switch to my move topological or move brush. It doesn't matter in this case because I have a um, mask. And I'm just going to push. Uh, let me reset this. Right. I'm going to push this in. I can smooth that out. So I'm kind of like re-blocking things even though my creature is already pretty polished. So you see, I have like that thick eyelid in there. Let's clear that. Um, and let's also use uh, the same tool for the top eyelid. I'm going to move my references so that you can see more of what I'm doing. Uh, but I have them on my second screen, so I can still see uh, some cool shapes that I have, like this one. So am I... I might follow some of these patterns here or the cleanness of these as well in some areas. So we'll see. I'll put that here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do another one for the top eyelid. Uh, maybe slightly smaller than that. Okay, accept that. And then I'm going to use my move topological again sort of to integrate that shape. So that looks, that looks good. Uh, I will do the same thing with these pieces here. I'm going to push that in for the wattle. All right, so it's kind of like re-blocking certain things, uh, but I think it kind of like works in this case. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and redynamize now and see, and pay attention to the small portions here and see if that works. So redynamize, and you lose a little bit of the details. So this is a, a, a point in time that as I do this and I add these portions, I would say, you know, it might actually be a good idea to re dynamish with a slightly higher resolution, maybe even more than that. All right. So I'm going to smooth this out quickly just to bring them closer to the same sort of polish level as the rest. All right. Uh, but then again, we're kind of like back to at the beginning of what we started with this with a bunch of objects that look like we just stuck them in. So the, uh, the, the, the objective now would be to, even if you add new things, to make sure that they're unified or like they belong to the thing. So I'm going to work on integrating this. Um, I'm going to use a different brush. This time I'm going to use the clay brush. And that one just adds volume as well very quickly. So that way we can integrate this fairly quick as well. And then I'm going to switch back to my clay buildup that has a bit more control. And then start refining this as well. Um, I personally, I like the clay brush to help me build those quick volumes, like, yeah, those volumes quickly, like just like I just did. Um, but it is, it is a tool that is harder to, to control or to, to do it uh, subtly. So let me give you an example. If I use the clay brush here, you see, it just adds that volume really nicely flats, but even if I press like really softly, it's already giving me a pretty strong effect. Uh, um, it looks pretty lumpy, right? So even if I go over, let me undo all of that. If I go over this slowly, you see, it just creates that sort of bumpiness, uh, which I like, or I mean, I don't like, but I, I find it useful for certain things. In this case, adding this type of volumes faster. Uh, and it sort of respects a bit of the, the depth of the previous stroke. So um it's is not adding that that huge amount of volume that the clay builder brush does so from a from a side it's not a lot um so that's one of the benefits of this and then if i switch to the clay clean the clean builder brush or the clay builder brush pretty much the same thing um you can press like really softly and you see that there's barely any any changes or you can press harder and that way you build that volume so the clay builder has that sort of property and the same thing as the one that I customize, um, that you can press like really softly to just do subtle changes. Whereas with the clay builder brush, you sort of like have to commit to adding those volumes. I think that's the main difference. But it's it's just a you know it's just a preference really. You can do the same thing with both. Uh, you can lower the intensity of the C intensity of the clay brush and achieve similar results. Uh, but I think that's uh, I think one that's one of the the difference. Uh, you also have the clay. Uh, tubes and that is just an awesome tool to create sort of hard surface or to block hard surface stuff uh, which is i'll show you clay tubes so that one has a very strong thing so if i'm doing like a suit for this creature i can just go like this it's very sketchy but then i can refine it with the damp sander brush um so it's a it's a matter of preference That's honestly, that's how I sketch any hard surface that I do. I use the clay tubes um, to sketch it out. And then it's like anything else. It's just a, a process of how you refine things. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's an awesome tool. All right. I think we're getting hung up on, on details here. I could, I could do this that I'm doing for hours. Uh, I don't think there's, um, there's a point in time that I say like, okay, that's enough. Uh, if I have the time, I'll spend time doing this. So I'm just going to refine the volume slightly. Um, I would say something else that you can do at this point is you can also use this uh, the Sculptures Pro if you want to explore even more things. Um, a really cool brush that I love uh, with the Sculptures Pro is the Blob brush to create any sort of growth uh, bits. Um, you can get um, 
you can get a little bit carried on carried carried away with this brush uh, because it's cool to use but you know for certain things could be good so i was just thinking about like that sort of waddle thing um it could be some kind of like growth here so i'll just push this with the sculptures pro and it creates that that sort of blowy thing same thing with this i can just push that down and because i'm having sculptures pro i can just do this like so i don't know if it's you know that doesn't look good at all um but it is something else you know if if you want to do like little growths like this that's actually not too bad uh, i could do something like the cassowary type of thing and make this very a very prominent feature of the design so it's kind of like um if you look at the cassowary um do you guys know what i'm talking about um i'll bring it in so this is the sort of like the horn thing that I was thinking about when I created that bit of the top of the head, right? This bit. But now I'm looking at this sort of wattle thing, this sort of compressing of the skin. Uh, and I think this could be a, a really cool part of the design. And this is something that came out from today's exploration or refinement. So it wasn't part of the blockout. And that's what I love about this whole technique. So I'm using a Sculptris Pro just as a reminder. That's why I'm not worried about any topology or anything. Uh, and I'm using the blob brush to create these sort of compressions, which I think are really cool. This is, it, it looks sort of random, but if you give them some directionality, they look pretty cool. Uh, but th this is, again, one of the things that I would advise to, to be you know, cautious about how you use this one because um, it could very easily become like the entire creature is full of these growths and then it's hard to read. And again, it, that, that's the same sort of danger that you, um, that you have when you're adding details in zeros because it's such an easy thing to do that it becomes, makes it really easy so you can just overdo it. I'm trying to maintain a, a good balance here. I think we are ready to move on into details. Although, you know, these things that I'm doing, they look a little bit like details, but they're not, they're, they're just an indication of what the details could be. Um, all right, so now that you know what I'm talking about with this, I'm gonna move it away so we have more space, turn off this, uh, and I'm gonna do a quick save. All right, so um, next step, um, this is a personal preference. You don't have to do it, but I would recommend if you want to keep track of your progress. Uh, so instead of just continue working on this one, I'm going to duplicate it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and clone this. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to generate a, a mesh that actually uh, we can use to subdivide and then we can take into to do the texturing and all of that. Uh, but it's also an important thing um, because it allows you to add details a lot easier. Now, this is something that I, I want to do before I show you how to do remeshing and projection and all of that. Uh, and it's more like a, um, like a workflow thing or a, or a workflow question that you can ask yourself. If you're happy with what you have right now, then it is a good time to do it. However, if you think that you might want to 
add details that are very prominent, like what I did with the gross and this waddle thing. Um, this is something that can be done after you do the re the remeshing. So in other words, you could have it, you could have that uh, as a you know as an extra once you have the nice topology. Uh, the problem is that you're not going to have something that that follows that contour and that um, that shape very well. So you're going to end up with something that is um, that is very uh, stretch or like the polygons are very stretched to be able to define that. If you have lots of res like lots of this uh, resolution or subdivision levels, it's not going to be a problem, um, but it's something to think about. So to clarify it, in in other words, if you're planning to do larger details than what you know, let me just give you an example. So if your details are going to be like doing these type of things, you know, it's totally fine, right? Just doing large uh, folds and all of that. That's what we're going to be doing. However, if your details are going to be, you know, these, this sort of thing, large stuff, um, that's actually not too bad. <laughs> uh, see, this is one of my problems. Like I just make these, these things just to test things out and I'm like, oh, I like it. So I'll stick with it. Um, it's kind of like a nice, sort of transition into the bid. Uh, so that's quite nice. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but this is like the, this is the, uh, this is an honest design process, right? I'm not, you know, I don't have anything like super clear in my head. Like, it's like, okay, that's it. I just make changes as I go. And I think, okay, this design has more, um, more value. <laughs> so if you're doing the design, like this, Detail that are like very prominent, it is better to do them now before you do the, re the remission. That's all. That's the whole, the whole thing. Uh, so just to give you an example, I'm going to use my uh, Geiger standard strong. This is a, a, you can use the standard brush and then just increase the C intensity. That's pretty much what this is. It's just a very strong standard brush. Um, and I want to do that to sort of continue this, these lines a little bit so I can integrate them a bit better. Uh, but that's why Let's just move that out. That's why I, I wanted to, to mention this before I do any sort of uh, remeshing because these lines are going to be very prominent. So I don't want to distort the, the polygons as much. All right, maybe we can do the same thing in here. Uh, this is another cool practical tip. If you're using a brush like this that is pretty strong, um, just do the lines, but then you can use a smooth brush and just smooth out like the, the transition or how like these falls fall into or integrate into the um, the skin. So those are larger folds. Um, I wouldn't call them, I would say like more like secondary shapes than anything. And I'm just using this brush because it's very quick, if, uh, very quickly. Um, well, like it, it allows me to do this very quickly. But you can, you know, if you have, if you want to have more control, you can totally do it with a standard brush. Uh, it's just that you have to do more strokes over it. And if you have a, a resolution that is pretty high, and then you're using the smooth brush, and it's not really smoothing anything, uh, you can use the smooth stronger that comes with ZBrush. So that's is going to smooth things out a lot faster, uh, which is pretty handy for, you know, situations like this where we already have something that is pretty dense. I think I'm happy with this, so I'm just going to duplicate this one more time uh, because obviously we made some slightly larger changes for that secondary shapes. 